Conservative comedians at the Babylon Bee are now in hot water because they made a joke at the expense of white supremacists that didn't go over too well for some reason that um, they can't quite figure out. And now they don't know why they're facing this backlash from their own fans, but they're actually not the only conservatives to recently get a wake-up call about the audience that they've cultivated this week. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Babylon Bee, they're basically the right-wing equivalent of The Onion, but not funny. But without further ado, this is the satirical piece in question that ruffled so many of their fans feathers quote the white race must maintain our genetic purity says inbred man now they go on to write quote local white supremacist and product of incest randy biggums isn't shy about his radical beliefs regarding race in america telling reporters saturday that caucasians have a moral responsibility to maintain genetic purity by only marrying other purebred members of the european race quote us whites are genetically superior and we got to keep our blood pure out of the inbred man. Yeah, so it's not the first time that this joke has been told. In fact, just four days earlier, right-wing grifter Ian Miles Chong made a similar joke, writing on Twitter, quote, the superior race has some pretty bad representatives. Why are they always morbidly obese? Now, I'm sure that you'll be totally shocked to hear that that didn't go over too well with his fans as well, but we'll get to that in a moment. But for the most part, the Babylon Bee made a pretty common joke about white supremacists, but here's how their fans reacted when they decided to share that on Twitter. Were you guys guys hacked by Jimmy Kimmel? Unfollow. Zero white guilt. It's good to be white. What were you hoping to accomplish with this one? Wow, who thought this was a good idea? This person tagged the manager of Twitter, saying Elon Musk X terms clearly states this is against its terms. If this post is acceptable, then does that mean it is now permissible to slander people based on race, genetics, or disability? I mean, they're already doing that, so I guess, yeah. Welp, it's been nice, unfollowed. Disgusting organization. How to admit you're Jewish without actually saying it. White Lives Matter California writes, Jews always invert reality and says it's Jewish people who are actually inbred. LOL, good one. Anyway, check this cool microbiology blog I found. And then they link to a WordPress blog about how Ashkenazi Jews are actually the ones who are inbred, not white people. Gotcha. This person just shared a bunch of screenshots of articles saying that Jewish people aren't white. This person shares an article about how LGBTQ people were accepted in Berlin until the Nazis came to power. And I guess the implication is that it was good that the Nazis persecuted them. And this person just shared a picture of Sidney Sweeney with no context, but I mean, take from that what you will. Now, Matt14 shared some more screenshots with one person calling them anti-white, another saying, we get it, you're all Jews, and one person questioning if they've gone woke. Now, another user shared screenshots accusing them of taking Jewish marching orders, saying the site is run by Jewish people, and another called it Jewish projection. Now, you're only getting a tiny, tiny fraction of all of the anti-Semitism in response to that tweet, and it gets much more Nazi-like the deeper you go into that thread. So we're going to stop here so that way we can still be published on YouTube. But the folks at the Babylon Bee were clearly caught off guard by the sheer amount of backlash to that article that they faced, and the owner of the Babylon Bee, Seth Dillon, actually addressed his disappointed white supremacist fans, writing on Twitter, when you're personally offended by a joke about white supremacy, you might want to rethink some things, including whether Christ really is your king. Now, I'm assuming that he added the Christ is king part because he's likely been seeing a lot of replies like these, where people use Christ is king to to be anti-Semitic towards him since he is Jewish. And these are just two examples that he shared. In fact, the very first reply that I saw was someone saying to him, you're Jewish, right? Now, Seth Dillon also shared this tweet from CCG Bryson, who pointed out the different responses to their jokes in the past. Vivek joke, funny. Joke about Jewish tunnels, funny. Jokes about black people, funny. Jokes about white people, way too far. Now, in response, Seth Dillon writes, it wasn't even about white people. It was a joke about white supremacists, and it was originally published back in 20. 2017 without any backlash. Something changed, but it wasn't us. And finally, he retweeted this post from Frank Fleming, who said, I think this article is all the way back from like the first week of the Babylon Bee, but man, look at the replies now. It's like an upturned rock. So it's really interesting to me that Seth Dillon interprets this backlash from his audience as them going mask off, but he didn't think twice when his audience loved this blatantly racist post about Vivek Ramaswamy, where they say, Trump promises Vivek an administration position running the White House 7-Eleven. So Seth is seemingly confused about why his audience is fine with edgy jokes about non-white races, but really touchy about jokes at the expense of white people, specifically white supremacists. And allow me to help you out, Seth. 
It's because they're white supremacists. This is the audience that you cultivated. So, of course, they're going to roast you for poking fun at white supremacists because that's who they are. They don't go to the Babylon Bee for satire or jokes. They go to the Babylon Bee so you can reinforce their white supremacist worldview. And if they happen to laugh at a racist joke or two, well, then that's just a bonus. But ultimately, they are seeking ideological confirmation, not jokes. And he doesn't understand that about his own audience. That's why there's this backlash. And this is a lesson that Ian Miles Chong also had to learn this week as well, because in response to his joke about white supremacist Nazis that we saw earlier, the Nazis who follow him also reacted as we'd all expect. The very first reply that you see with 7,000 likes shares a picture of him saying glass houses ETC. That one girl looks pregnant, not fat. Project much? Well, that was racist. When you said superior race, it took me a minute because I didn't see any Israeli symbolism, but then I realized it was just their retro symbols. Did Ian get hacked? Who finances you? I cherry-picked three people to spin my narrative because I'm afraid of surging nationalism. This person chimed in with stats to show that it's actually non-white people who are the most obese, and there were other countless posts from anti-black racists basically chiming in to say, actually, it's black people who are the fattest, and that was like a common thing that you see all throughout this thread. This person says, well, according to the left, just about any white person who knows who their ancestors are and are proud of their accomplishments are, quote, white supremacists. So that would actually make me one too, and I happen to be fit with no trauma tats. Interesting. This person says, I guess you're referring to the swastika. Most people with swastikas have been to prison and was forced into a gang for survival. It's the groups outside in power positions with no markings we should worry about nowadays. I believe there are still lots of Nazis in USA, Ukraine, Germany. Now that thread goes on and on and on, but I mean, you get the point. Now, the lesson for right-wing grifters like Ian Miles Chong and Seth Dillon is that the right-wingers in their audiences will not tolerate jokes about white supremacists and Nazis because they feel as if you're making fun of them when you make those jokes, and you are. They're offended by jokes about white supremacists because that's who they are, which is why the whole I'm not making fun of white people, just white supremacists excuse doesn't land with them. The average conservative is a white supremacist. They, they may not explicitly say that they think non-white races are inferior, but that's because they cloak their racism in buzzwords like woke and DEI. For example, in response to the bridge collapse in Baltimore, this large account on Twitter responded saying, quote, this is Baltimore's DEI. EI mayor commenting on the collapsed Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's going to get so much worse. Prepare accordingly. And as Sean put it, DEI, wokeness, critical race theory, political correctness, cultural Marxism, montage of the right trying on different euphemisms for just being a racist. And he is exactly right. So instead of saying, I don't want my children learning about black people, they'll call it CRT and be opposed to that. Instead of saying that they don't want to see black people in movies, they'll say that the movie went woke and they're not going to watch it because of that. And instead of just saying the N-word, they're now just saying DEI. And we haven't even gotten to their fear-mongering about brown and black immigrants from Latin America and Haiti, but conspicuous silence about white immigrants from Ukraine and Europe. Hmm, I wonder why that is. See, there's a reason for that in all of this. You can't untether white supremacy from the modern conservative movement because they're inextricably linked at this point. Seth Dillon and Ian Miles Chong didn't realize that, and it's why they faced backlash for their jokes about white supremacists from their white supremacist audiences. So I hope I was able to clear that up for them. Woke mom. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Woke ide